Soapbox Engage is an online engagement toolset for nonprofit organizations and other organizations of all shapes and sizes. Soapbox Engage comes with a number of different apps, such as an app for online fundraising, event registration, advocacy tools, etc. But in this demo, we're going to be focusing on the Soapbox Directories app. Now, this app is really important to us at PicNet because we really wanted to find a way to make it as easy as possible for organizations to display data from Salesforce. Typically, in order to do this, you'd have to go through and write a bunch of Apex code and Visual Force pages. Definitely not something within the, the hands of um, an accidental techie or a non-technical person whatsoever. So what we set off to do is to find a way to allow organizations to create beautiful and engaging online directories, to do things like membership directories, publications directories, a variety of different types of services, displaying data from Salesforce and putting it on your website. Here's a couple of examples of what we've got here that I'll be showing today. Um, one with a tablet view and another with a smartphone view. So what I want to be able to do today is show you two different examples and then be able to show you behind the scenes how this all works together because it's pretty magical the way this stuff is done so easily for organizations with just accidental techies on staff. No code required. The first example is going to be a membership directory. The second example is going to be a publications directory. And of course, anytime you want to be able to allow people to search your data from Salesforce on a website, either securely behind a password protected area or publicly for anybody to be able to search, these are the types of things you can do with the Soapbox Engage directories app. So to start, let's just look at a sample uh, member directory that we have here on one of our um, test sites. What you'll notice here is that we've just got the logo of the organization at the top and then just a green background. With Soapbox Engage, we're happy to go ahead and customize the template of the Soapbox Engage instance to match your organization's website. So if your organization has some uh, branding that's been done for your website in WordPress, Joomla, or any other CMS content management system, we're able to go ahead and take that design and apply it to your Soapbox Engage instance so that your users don't know the difference when they're moving from your main website into a Soapbox Engage based page. The Directories app has three front end views. It has a search view, then when you drill down through a search you get to a results view, and then you can click into one result and go to the detailed record view. All of this is searching real time in Salesforce and doing some things to lower the API count, essentially the number of requests that you're making of Salesforce using some caching mechanisms that we have. But to start with, let's just look at this member directory. We've got the ability to go ahead and display any type of field you want from Salesforce directly on your Soapbox Engage front end. So in this case, we have text fields for first name, last name, state, city, languages. But we've also got fields like multi-select fields. You can show radio buttons. You can show check boxes. Any field type that you can create a field on in Salesforce, you can display within Soapbox Engage in the directories app here. And you can customize everything from the title, the introductory text, what shows up here for the member directory preform title, the form itself, the order, the field names, any help text, all of this can be done on your own without having to have a developer create a page like this for you. When somebody does the search, they'd be taken to a results view. The results view can show you a count of the number of results. It can have its own custom introduction that you can customize yourself. It can show any field from within the object that you've searched. So Soapbox Directories allows you to search any one object at a time in Salesforce and any field within that object. It could be a custom field, a standard field, it doesn't matter, we can search anything you wish. And then we can show those fields with labels, so this is very simple, so it says city, um, and unfortunately it's showing something that should not be a city, uh, and it's showing a state, full name, business number, etc. You can also make it so your users can go ahead and filter the results further. So I can do a show hide button here and then show what they searched for and allow them to refine their search uh, even further. If they click on the title, if you want to display a title, or if they click on a read more link, they can be taken to a detailed record view, which can look totally different than the results view or the search view. So in this case, we've got a very tabular format here, very straightforward, again, full name, city, title, state, business. But you can show additional fields if you want 
completely different fields than we saw on the search form or the results view. Again, this is all point and click for you as an administrator to be able to solve. Additionally, you can make it so that the pages, any of them, can be printable or PDF'd in case you want people to be able to download the results as well too. One other thing to note, just like everything else within Soapbox Engage, we've built all of our technology to be mobile responsive, meaning that if you're looking at it on a smartphone or on a tablet, it's going to look optimized for those devices. So if we take a look here at a smartphone view of that same directory, you can see that we've minimized the header, we've formulated the fields to be a little bit tighter on a smartphone view, and everything else looks great. This can work for any of the directory services that you've got using Soapbox Engage. So that's what something looks like from kind of a member directory perspective. We see a lot of associations using this if they want to be able to show a public member directory that maybe has public facing information that say an association of professionals would want to display. And then we can have a separate directory within the same Soapbox Engage account that would be for members only that when you log in, maybe you can see more, more profile information about the professional in the member directory. That allows you to say on a field by field basis, which fields should be displayed for a logged in visitor versus a public visitor. So some great ideas as to how you can be using Soapbox directories for your own organization. Now let's go to a totally different use case. In this case, we're going to be looking at the National Health Law Program and how they use Soapbox Engage directory app to be able to display all the publications. Great organization collecting a lot of information about health law policy, and they wanted to make it easy for their team to be able to store all the publications that they are creating in Salesforce, expose that through a searchable form on their website using the Soapbox Engage directories app. So here is their publications page. On this publications page, you can do a search by keyword, or you can do an advanced search, where you can search by issue and choose multiple issues, file type, drop-down options here, document source, even by full title. And they've built it in such a way that as you're searching for these different options, it can change the number of results that are appearing right away. Just kind of like what you see in Google. When you start typing something into Google, it will automatically filter your results. So in this case, it's got 907 results. With the Soapbox Directories app, you're able to choose different types of fields that you want to be able to sort by. In this case, rather than showing it in a more tabular format, they're showing it kind of like a blog style format where they've got a title, they've got an image, they've got a byline that they've included here. All of this is raw data coming from Salesforce in real time, customized for that user's experience and looking great specifically for the needs of this particular organization. If you were to go ahead and filter it out by saying, show me only publications that are part of the civil rights issue, I can scroll down and now see there's 57 results. Again, we can do the same sort of uh, sorting as well as a display that looks a lot crisper for the needs of this particular organization. So another good example of storing data in Salesforce, making it really easy for them behind the scenes to manage the workflow and the publications of the publication of publications, and then to be able to display this on the front end of their website using Soapbox Engage. So let's look behind the scenes and see how this stuff gets made, because this is pretty powerful stuff. Soapbox Engage allows you to log in from any web browser anywhere in the world to be able to get to the headquarters of your Soapbox Engage instance. In this case, from the, um, the main control panel page, uh, we can see that we have our search pages here, which will be renamed directories uh, shortly. And this shows you the different directories that you have. So we can see the URL for the directories, the names of the directories, and actions to be able to customize the URL, so how it would show up when people type it in their web browser, a view button, and an edit button. It's also got the ability to view all of the different search directories that you've created. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're looking at the different directories that we have for this particular account. In this case, there's two. We can see which object in Salesforce each one of those directories is hitting whether or not this directory is published to the public, and whether or not, uh, or who the, the author is and the date that it was created. Now if we drill down to an individual directory, I want to show you guys how this gets created because it's pretty easy to do. Anybody can do this, point and click their way to making this happen. So you've got five different tabs when you start to create your first directory. You can choose the title, select the URL, determine whether or not it's published, 
and then be able to go ahead and choose which Salesforce object you want to be able to do the searching of. This is great because you can look at any object in Salesforce and you can choose it custom, standard, hidden, or otherwise, and allow it to be accessible for searching. Once you do that and you give it a description, you're then able to go ahead and determine what's going to show up on the search view, on the results view, the list of the results, and then a detailed record view when you drill down to a particular record. So in each one of these screens, you can see what is the Salesforce element that's being included, what's the field label that we want to display to the public, is it accessible to the public or is it private? Is it a field from an object in Salesforce? Is it a text element? I'll show you more about that in a moment. Is this individual field published? And then you've got the ability to drag and drop the different field order and the ability to edit or delete fields one at a time. We've got the ability to add Salesforce elements and add text elements, which I'll show you in a moment. But first, let's look at the list tab. Look at this, it looks very similar to what we saw before. Uh, the same table structure. Uh, there's a difference in the position, so that it lets us know where this is going to be displayed within the table of the results. And we see a couple of new buttons here. One button is the Add Attachments list. So in Salesforce, you've got the ability to have um, an attachments related list to any object in Salesforce. This allows you to add that here as well. You've got the ability to add an image. So if there's any images that you've stored in Soapbox Engage or in Salesforce, you can display that as part of the result. And then this really powerful tool of add a related list. This lets you go ahead and display any child objects related to this object that you're searching. Super powerful if you're doing something like a directory where you're doing a directory search of accounts and then you want to show all the contacts in the results of those accounts found. Finally, we've got the record display view. And in the record display view, same thing with these different fields. Let's just dive into each one of these buttons one at a time. So let's say we wanted to add a field onto our form, I'm sorry, onto the record display view. If I click the add Salesforce element, this goes ahead, query Salesforce for the object we're looking at, and shows me all the different fields, the name of the field as well as the developer name, in Salesforce for this object that I haven't used yet on this particular view. So I can see anything here. Let's say that I choose birth date, for instance. The system is smart enough to know, hey, birth date, that's a date type field. And in fact, because we know it's a date type field, we're going to show you different ways to format the value of it. So do you want to format it because it's a date like this, this, or this? Or would you like to go ahead and put it in a custom format that you can have it be whatever type of formatting you want for date? So great, powerful information to be able to customize on a field-by-field -field basis. You can make it the field published or hidden. You can go ahead and set a default value for it. You can give it a label. You can decide whether or not to display the label. You can do a prefix or a suffix. So if you want to have text show up before the value and after the value and kind of make the value emerge in between them, you can choose that. Any sort of special CSS keywords, like if you want to be able to make one field bright red and bold and another field dark green and underlined, you can choose to do that on a field by field basis. And then you can set the access level on a field by field basis as to who should see a particular field. So lots of powerful stuff there, just on a field by field basis, no coding whatsoever. Same thing with adding attachments list. If you want to be able to go ahead and add attachments and display any attachments from the record that's found, you can do that as well and customize this to your heart's content. You can also add a text element. So if on the page you wanted to add a paragraph of text between two um, result fields, you can go ahead and do that. Choose any CSS keywords. You've got a WYSIWYG editor to include your text in here. This text would show up on every record uh, between different fields. Adding an image, you can go ahead and allow um, images to be displayed from Salesforce or from Within Soapbox Engage, you choose which field it is in Salesforce that you want to get the value of the image. And then you can give it a max width and a max height and then determine the position as well. And then finally, one of the latest things we've got is one of our most powerful options is the add related list option. So if I go ahead and click this, you can create another form within Soapbox Engage and have that effectively be a subquery. So if you're doing a search on accounts, you get accounts results, and you're looking at one account record. Let's say our company picked that. 
on that PICNATS page, you can then do a sub-search, which we call just a related search form, based on the another form that you may have already created within Soapbox Engage. So it's kind of a form within a form within a form type of functionality here to do related lists. Super powerful, makes it really easy for you to be able to show uh, data that's uh, parent-child relationships there. Lots of stuff packed into that. Uh, happy to answer questions if people have that as well, too. Finally, the Options tab. Now, in the Options tab, we have, have really brought everything to the forefront here to make sure that you can customize the experience of every one of these pages. So the search page intro and the search page outro at the bottom of the page, you can customize that. The list view, the, the results view, you can customize the intro and outro there. Even on the record view itself, for each individual record, customize the intro and the outro. Even better, if you want to customize what happens when somebody finds no results, you can customize the language for that. And from, for the technical people here, if you've reached an API limit for the day, so Salesforce isn't allowing you to query uh, your own Salesforce instance anymore, you can put a custom uh, uh, error message there. As well as if for some reason uh, there is no connection to Salesforce for whatever reason, you can show a specific error message for that as well too. Lots of functionality there. Let's dive into the different parameters you can provide. You can do uh, zip radius searching. So if you want to be able to do a search based on a zip code and find results within that, you can do this. You can change the search button text. You can make it so that the title is hidden or shown. A lot of different options here for just the search page. Same thing with the list results page, being able to show the intro and the outro. What's the limitation for the number of results you want to show? Pagination, show pagination results, tons and tons and tons of configuration that you can choose really easily here. On a record view, you can show the intro and outro. If you've got addresses, you can even show a Google map embedded for that particular record. So that's really powerful for you to be able to do. And you can customize what the URL is going to be for that record. So in this case, it's just going to be URL of your organization to the member directory, slash record, slash, and then the ID in Salesforce but you can also make that be a custom field that you've got in Salesforce to represent the URL for this page. So rather than trying to find the PicNet result, our company's named result in a directory at record slash some crazy Salesforce 15 character ID, you can go to www, say myorg.org slash directory slash PicNet, for instance, and that can take you directly to the result with a, a very human, readable, and understandable, and easy to remember results. So if you want to put that on a postcard, you want to put it on a website, very easy to point people to a very specific record from Salesforce. And then finally, for search engine optimization on a um, directory by directory basis, you can put in special metadata for that. So everything from the search form, the results view, the record view, and a bunch of different options, all of this customizable without you needing to know any code, no Apex, no Visual Force pages, all done really point-click simple within the Soapbox Engage Directories app. So if you want to learn more, take a look at www.soapboxengage.com. We've got some wonderful success stories. We've got our pricing listed there and a lot of information about how we can help you out in providing your community with a great looking directory of data from Salesforce. Thanks for watching.